Are you dreaming of igniting young minds and shaping the future one student at a time? Do you feel that calling to the classroom, but you get nervous at the thought of the interview? Well, if that's you, don't worry. Because in today's episode, we're going to give you tips and strategies of how to navigate your next elementary teacher interview. So grab a pen, a piece of paper, get ready to take some notes because we're starting right now. Hey everybody, Gordon Emerson here, Superintendent of Schools and Gallup Certified Strengths Coach. And on this channel, we leverage my experience from classroom teacher to school district superintendent to help you go further faster in your professional educator journey. If this is your first time with us, don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well as the bell notification so you don't miss any cool updates or any of our newest episodes. All right, everybody. So let me take you back for a moment. So it's July. It is hot. I'm in a full suit. I'm in a tie. And I'm nervous. I'm nervous because I'm headed to what I'm hoping is the interview that is going to set forth the trajectory for the rest of my professional career. I'm going to my teacher interview. So I'm going to go and meet with the principal. And I am, I'm nervous, but I'm excited. I'm excited because I think that if I get this job, I'm going to be able to inspire lives. I'm going to be able to change the future for kids. I feel like I'm going to be able to be a forceful change for good in a school community. And that's why I wanted to become a professional educator which when we get into these questions that you're going to need to be prepared for to be effective in your elementary teacher interview, one of those things is going to be why, how, and how come you want to be a teacher. But hold that for a second because we're going to, we're going to get into these five questions in just a moment. But just taking, taking you back to my own journey, I was excited and I was nervous and I was anxious and I was hot and I was sweaty because it mattered. So I'm gonna press upon you as you think about this journey and whether you're a brand new teacher, whether you're an aspiring teacher, whether you're a first year, fifth year or 15th, 20th, 25th or 35th year teacher, the passion, the drive, the commitment that you need to have for scholars, for our kids, never changes. It never wavers. Whether I was a classroom teacher and have worked my way up through the system all the way up to school district superintendent, I still have a passion for making sure that I do right for kiddos. And so if you walk in always thinking about that, that will help frame all of the answers and all of the questions. It'll frame all of your answers to the questions that you're going to get. If you put kids at the center, you put your passion for education, you put your passion for being a change for good, you're gonna be in a good situation. So I was successful, I got the job, and it opened up so many doors for me, and I'm hoping that this video and this information and these insights will do the same for you. So let's jump right in. All right, let's start with question number one, which is a question that you should never be surprised by and you should never be caught off guard when you hear it. So be prepared for this one. And that question is, why do you want to become a teacher? It is not a trick question. There is not a perfect answer. But there is your answer. And your answer matters. Because every single person should have a different response to this question because we all have come to the place and space of where we want to become a teacher for very, very, very different reasons. But... And in order to help you, and this is some feedback that I really, truly appreciate that's come from the community, is to give you some, some thoughts or some sample responses that will help kind of get you on a path to then shaping your own specific responses to these types of questions. So the question being, why do you want to become a teacher? Why do you want to teach? Why do you want to be in front of scholars? And so a sample response, just to get you thinking, get you thinking about it would be something like this. My desire to become a teacher stems from a deep-rooted belief that education is the cornerstone of growth and development for kids. From a very young age, witnessing the joy and the sense of accomplishment of someone's face when they learn something new 
ignited by my passion for teaching, it's not just about giving and imparting them knowledge, but it's also about inspiring, challenging, and nurturing young minds to explore, question, and most importantly, discover. I see teaching as a privileged opportunity to make a lasting impact in students' lives, guiding them not only academically, but also in their personal growth and values. This profession, to me, is the most direct way to make a positive difference in the world, one student at a time. Now that's a sample of a response that you could give to that question. It's derived from my own experience. It's derived from the way that I look at the world. And you have the same. You have the way that you look at the world. You have the experiences that you've gone through. And it is that it is it is those experiences and those things that you've gone through that will help you shape who you are and why you have chosen to become an educator, a professional educator. So when you think about responding to this question, be yourself, be confident, be energetic. Let them see you for who you are. Let the principal or the interview panel, the department chair, the grade level leader, whoever is in that room, be ready to wow them. By wow them by being you, by being authentic, by being genuine, by sharing who you are and what you're all about, because that's what our kids deserve. Real, authentic, engaging, compassionate, empathetic professionals who will go the extra mile. And all of that can be incorporated into your response to why do you want to become a teacher? And that's question number one. All right, let's move to question number two. It may not be question two in the interview, but a second question for you to consider for our conversation today. Question number two is, what is your teaching philosophy? This is distinct and different from why do you want to become a teacher? Because that in many cases, the reason for becoming a teacher uh, goes back to historically experiences that you've had, things that you've seen. But your philosophy, in many cases, can be derived from some of the similar experiences, but more so from your teacher preparation, from the different courses you've taken, from the different theories you've been exposed to, and also of equal importance, the types of professionals education professionals that you've been around and you've had the opportunity to interact with can help to shape what your philosophy is about the world. So let me give an example of a potential response that you could give to this question that you can then individualize and make unique for your particular interview experience. So a sample response to what is your teaching philosophy could be this. My teaching philosophy is centered around creating an inclusive, student-centered learning environment that fosters curiosity, critical thinking, and a deep love for learning. I believe in integrating diverse teaching methodologies that cater to the individual learning needs of my students, ensuring each child feels valued, understood, and challenged. Education, in my view, should empower students to become confident, compassionate, and responsible global citizens. I emphasize collaborative learning, real-world application of knowledge, and encouraging students to question, and more importantly, explore the world. By nurturing a supportive classroom culture, my goal is to inspire lifelong learners who are not afraid ever to pursue their passions and their dreams. So this gets at the big ideas of what will happen in your classroom, the types of lessons you'll design, the types of experiences you'll create, the type of environment that you'll feel when somebody walks into your classroom the joy that your students will feel being in your room, the joy that you will feel sitting at your desk, sitting in front of the room, 
moving about your room as you put up classroom work and you demonstrate the excellence and the mastery of learning that your students have been able to create. This all gets at this philosophical approach to how you will be as a teacher and as a professional educator. Take the time and the opportunity to really think deeply from a philosophical standpoint about what you want to be and who it is that you aspire to convey and display to your students, to the staff of professionals that you will be around, to the leadership of your school site, to the leadership of your district, and the leadership of your community. I know many, 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 many teachers who are community stalwarts. They know all these critically important people across the community know Mrs. So-and-so, Mr. So-and-so at XYZ school. They have been an amazing third grade teacher for the last enter the number of years, but they've transcended just being another teacher at the school. They have now moved into this higher level of they are someone who is synonymous, a classroom teacher who is synonymous with education, innovation, helping kids achieve, helping kids go further, helping kids unlock their greatest potential. This is all wrapped up in the philosophical concept to who you want to be as a teacher. What's your philosophy? What do you want to create? What space and place do you want to create in your classroom? from a philosophical standpoint. Harness that, individualize it. Take some of the th insights that we've given you in the video and then personalize them for yourself and showcase who you are to the principal and to the hiring committee. That's gonna be the secret sauce to help you get that question right, answer that question, inspire someone, motivate somebody, have the principal sit back in their chair and go, wow, I cannot wait to hire this person, I cannot wait to call the district office and tell the district office to offer this person, this professional, this scholar who's going to inspire our kids. I can't wait to make sure that they're a part of my campus, a, a part of my campus community, a part of my campus family. This philosophical question is a key to that. So take the time, think through that, and it's gonna serve you very, very well. And with that, let's move to question number three. All right, let's move into question number three. But before we do that, again, if you're getting value out of this, smash that like button. Again, share this video with as many people as possible in the education community. We want to inspire the next generation of educational leaders, the next generation of teachers. And so if this is providing value to you, I know it'll inspire others as well. So smash that like button so we can get this out to more people and share it with a friend whenever you can. So question number three. This question is, is probably one of the most important questions uh, to me as a superintendent. It would have been is a very, very important question to me as an actual high school principal, as a principal. Because more and more, I want to know that the educators and the professionals who are in front of our kids care deeply about them social, socially and emotionally, we're going to convey the content. We're going to teach to the standards. We're going to provide the core content and the curriculum. But, but almost as important, if not, well, let's just say it, I'll say it. Other people may not say it, but even more importantly, the care and the nurturing of scholars is important because if we go back to Maslow, if you go back to Maslow's hierarchy of needs, the safety and security needs, and the physical safety, the physical, physical security needs of human beings is foundational to everything else. So it's a long-winded way of saying question number three that I think you have to be prepared to be able to respond to is how will you foster a positive learning environment in your classroom. And notice the difference. And again, I'm not downgrading. I'm not downplaying how important it is to be content specific, standards focused. I'm not downplaying that. 
But what I am saying is that when your students feel safe, when your students feel nurtured, when your students feel they're in a positive environment, they will take chances. They will take risk. And I've talked to enough parents to know that the number one thing they want for every one of their child, <laughs> the number one thing they want for every one of their children is to be in a safe, nurturing, and positive environment. That is without question. So be prepared to think, respond, and articulate how will you create a positive learning environment. So let me give you a sample response and some things to think about with respect to this question. So when thinking about how will you create a positive learning environment, your sample response could have some of the following in it. Fostering a positive learning environment starts with building strong, trusting relationships with my scholars. I prioritize getting to know each student's interests, their strengths, and their areas for growth, creating a classroom atmosphere where every child feels seen, heard, and most importantly, respected. This involves setting clear expectations, promoting a culture of respect and kindness, and encouraging positive peer interactions. I strive to always integrate activities that build classroom community and incorporate students' interests into the lessons and the units to make the learning relevant and also engaging. And the commitment of maintaining a positive demeanor and showing genuine enthusiasm for teaching allows me to create a safe, welcoming space where all of my students will feel motivated to participate and even more importantly, take risk in their learning. This is the quintessential way of creating that positive environment. What do your kids care about? How do I harness, once I know what they care about, how will I build that into our learning activities? How will I honor and respect and amplify the things that I know matter to them as a means for creating a trusting, nurturing, and interactive, engaging environment? This is all about how do I create that environment? How do I create that for kids? So when we think about that positive learning environment, that positive learning environment allows us to create a space and a place where again, our scholars are gonna take risk. They're gonna be willing to be vulnerable. They're gonna be willing to think outside the box and go a little bit further because they know that their thoughts, their opinions, their perspectives, are going to be recognized, they're gonna be valued, and quite frankly, they're gonna be given the platform to create the environment where everybody in the classroom can learn and can thrive. We, we wanna create that for students. And again, once we create that foundation, the teaching of standards, the teaching of content, the pushing of rigor within the classroom becomes that much easier because all of our students know that they have a place at the table within our classrooms, that they're valued, that they're seen, and again, that they're respected. These are the things that I am listening for. These are the things that I wanna hear when I'm making the decision to hire someone. Whether it be a classroom teacher, whether it be a principal, a director, there are certain things that are non-negotiables and it's how do we create these environments? How do we create these opportunities within our classrooms for our students to thrive? So from the top to the bottom of the organization, everybody should be thinking about how do we create positive environments and your job when you're in that elementary, excuse me, and your job when you're in that elementary teacher interview is to show just how effective you're gonna be at creating that positive environment where students feel safe, they feel cared for, they feel heard, they feel respected, so they can be engaged and they can engage with you. And that's question number three. 
So before we move to question number four, share with us in the comments below, how will you create a positive learning environment for your scholars? I'd like to know how you're gonna answer that question when you get your next interview. Share that with us in the comments below. It can add value to the entire community as you're sharing that, there are people who are gonna benefit from your thoughts and your responses. Share that with us in the comments below and we're gonna move to question number four. All right, question number four. How will you differentiate instruction in your classroom? Do not sleep on this question. This is not a question that should be glossed over. Our scholars have diverse learning needs. And even more importantly, we as educators have got to be, we've got to be innovative. We've got to be creative. We've got to be thoughtful. We've got to be resilient. We've got to be resourceful because our students that are in our classrooms are going to be all along the various learning spectrum of what they have the skills, the knowledge, and the capacity to be able to do at any given time. And that spectrum might be this wide. And you've got to be able to operate at any of the spaces and places along it. So you've got to think about how will you create that? It's a tough question to answer sometimes without fully knowing what resources, what the expectations are, what the structures and the systems are that exist at the school. Sometimes it can be hard to answer the question. However, we're again gonna give you a sample response that'll get you started as you think about how you would want to respond to this type of a question, but then also how you personalize it for you and what your skills, what your knowledge and your capacity is. So when we think about the question of how will you differentiate instruction in your classroom, a sample response could be something like this. Differentiating instruction is key to meeting the diverse needs of my scholars. I employ a variety of strategies, including flexible grouping, personalized learning paths, and differentiated assignments to cater to the different learning needs, styles, and abilities of our scholars by incorporating a mix of visual, auditory, and kinesthetic activities, I can ensure that each lesson reaches every single student. Regular assessments and feedback will allow me to adjust my teaching approach and the materials as needed, ensuring that all students are challenged but also supported. Through integration of technology and creative problem solving tasks and assessments, I strive to make learning accessible and enjoyable for everyone in my classroom. So this is an example of tapping into the various components of what it means to create kind of a very, very differentiated learning environment using different learning modalities using different types of instructional inputs, things that are visual, things that are auditory, things that are kinesthetic, creating different types of structures and different types of assessments based on the needs, utilizing technology, utilizing problem-based learning, all these different pieces so that way you can capture in your best effort all of your learners that go from this end to this end and all of the spaces in between. This is what you want to create in a very, very differentiated learning environment. So you'll think long and hard about how you incorporate differentiation into your response. But hopefully this gives you some some sentence starters and some frames that will help get you down down the path. It's important to note that every classroom, every school site and every community is different. And what differentiation looks like is different. So again, thinking holistically around how you want to answer this question and having a good solid response is important. But then understanding that once you get into the seat and once you get into the job and you're in your classroom 
and you start to assess what resources you have and what structures exist. That differentiation may change, but your mindset doesn't have to. What you're able to do based on the resources, the support, the funding, the policies, the procedures, the best practices, the ongoing practices, whatever those things are, are going to be what they are, but they don't change your mindset and your ability to innovate within that system and within that structure when you are committed to differentiating for students, right? So don't forget that. Just think my mindset is all about differentiation and I will operate effectively and, ver and, and I'll be versatile within the environment to be able to provide those instructional opportunities for our students as we move forward. So thinking through differentiation, that's a key component. We're listening for it. There's an expectation for it. Every one of us as educational leaders, from classroom teachers to grade level leaders, to department chairs, to school site administrators, to district administrators, we wanna know that educators, professional educators are thinking about every single learner in their classroom and they're planning for how they will be strong and differentiating learning experiences, learning opportunities and learning activities for all of our scholars, all right? So differentiated learning and how you'll create that in your classroom is question number four. All right, and as we move into question number five, share with us in the comments below, what has got you most anxious about your next interview? Share that with us in the comments below. Again, as you share your insights, as you share those things, those pain points, those, those anxiety points, sharing that with the community helps us to think about how we might offer support, how we might be able to give you insights, give you thoughts about how you might approach certain components as you prepare. But then also it helps me as a creator of content focused on being able to help and assist you. It helps me to think about what additional information, what additional content that I can create that will provide value to you, that will provide solutions, answers to your questions. So share with us in the comments below again, what is giving you the most anxiety, the most stress, what's keeping you up at night about getting ready for your next interview? Because we want to help you crush it. So share that with us in the comments below. And let's go ahead and move to question number five. All right, so question number five is likely a question you're going to get at the end of the interview. But it can be the question that literally seals the deal and guarantees that you will get the job. It is not a technical question. It is not, there is no right or wrong response to the question, but it is a powerfully important question because it gets at culture. It gets at mindset. It gets at, is this somebody I want to be a part of my school community if I'm the principal? So question number five is, if you get the job, what can you offer us? Yes, I'll admit, it's a fairly selfish question that a principal will ask. It's like, what are you going to, what, what's in it for us? We give you the job and what are we going to get out of it? Don't think of it as a selfish question. Think of it. Don't think of it as a selfish question. Rather, think of it as a question where principals and hiring committees are being protective, being protective of the school community, the campus culture, because what they're really looking for in this answer is, what value are you bringing to the school community? How are you going to elevate and amplify the good work we're already doing? And more importantly, what the principal is really digging at is, can I see you helping to advance and move forward my vision for the school. Will you help me to enhance and advance that vision? That's really what the question's about. So let's unpack the question specifically. So the question is, if you get the job, what can you offer us? And a sample response could go something like this. Joining your school, I will bring a commitment to excellence, innovation, and community. My approach to teaching is not just about meeting curriculum standards, but it's about enriching the school culture with a vibrant spirit 
of curiosity, resilience, and innovation. I wanna offer my skills in creating inclusive lesson plans that cater to the diverse needs of our learners, that focuses on integrating technology to enhance learning and also fostering a classroom environment that encourages students to not only thrive academically, but also socially. Additionally, my enthusiasm for professional development and collaboration means I am eager to contribute to school-wide initiatives and learn from my colleagues. I am committed to being a positive and dynamic force within your team, contributing to our shared goal of creating a nurturing and stimulating educational experience for all of our scholars. This question and the response gets at who you are as an individual and how you will add value, how you will help to advance the school's goals, the school's mission, the vision that the principal has for where the principal wants to take the school. They are listening and hoping to hear things that align with their values, with their ethics, with their morals, with the direction that they wanna go in. So when you think, do not, do not forget about this question. Because, so I'm gonna take my hat off as an, you know, a, a principal and I'm gonna, I'm gonna put the superintendent hat on for just a moment. And I just wanna give you just some insight about this. As a superintendent, I think in terms of not, not this month, not even this year, but I'm thinking two, three, five, seven years from now, and I'm wanting to fill the organization from custodian, classroom teacher, principals, directors. I wanna fill the entire organization with people who are gonna add value. I want to know their big vision and their big ideas of commitment to advancing the organization's mission. So when you get given this opportunity to answer this particular question, it is all about the value add. Don't forget that because we know as leaders, we can teach you a number of hard skills. We can teach us skills. We can, we can take you through professional development and conferences and seminars that will teach you skills on lesson planning, lesson design, that will teach you skills on assessment, common formative assessments, that will teach you skills on reading comprehension and reading fluency, SADI strategies, EL strategies, things that will help to engage and make sure students tactically specifically tactically and and I guess meth mechanically, method, met methodologically, can do the things that we ask them to do. But that doesn't get at you. Your skills to be a professional that is operating at a very, very high level around what your skill set is and what value you're bringing, the, the, not the IQ, but the EQ. When you're able to demonstrate a high level of EQ, empathy, dedication, commitment, inspiration, charisma, vulnerability. When you're able to demonstrate all of those particular types of characteristics, when you have those, when they're innate, and when you can demonstrate them to us in the interview process, I as a superintendent know that the organization is gonna to continue to thrive because we're gonna give you the hard skills. We're gonna, I will tell you unequivocally, every single school district is gonna give you the hard skills, the training, the PD, that's all coming. But what we don't necessarily have are the EQ skills. So we want people who are gonna walk in the door with high levels of EQ skills. Because if I know you care about kids, I know you're willing to be compassionate, I know you're willing to be vulnerable, I know you're willing to be empathetic, now I'm gonna layer all those really, really good 
solid skills. And when I think about the question of like, what will you do for us as you come into the organization, when you bring in those EQ school, EQ skills, and I layer on top of that, the IQ skills and the training and the professional development that we're going to provide, we've got secret sauce for something great. So think long and hard about how you will add value when answering this final question. It is going to be, it could be the differentiator. You may nail every single question all the way up and then you get to this question. And if you don't nail this question, it could be the differentiator between whether the principal chooses you or a different candidate. Because if all the technical answers were solid from both candidates, but the candidate at the end answers this question better, the principal, I will tell you 95% of the time is gonna go with the person who they know has the high level of EQ. Because again, we can teach you the hard skills. So don't sleep on this question. Don't forget to dedicate time and energy to preparing for this type of a question and using the sample and some of the sentence frames in the sample response that I shared with you as a way to build your response to the question. There's no more noble profession than that of educators, than that of the teachers who are educating the next generation of people, of young people in our communities. We want the best of the best. And it is incumbent upon us as school leaders to make sure we're finding the best of the best. So we want you to continue to just thrive and be prepared to ace these interviews as you get them so that way you can come into the profession and you can inspire our scholars and you can inspire that next generation of solid, effective, contributing citizens in our communities. So if you want to know more about how you ace the interview, you can also check out this next video. It's gonna give you lots of wisdom and lots of insights as well. And we're looking forward to continue to share insights with you, share wisdom with you, give you more thoughts and things to think about as you move into the profession, the most noble profession on the planet Earth, which is that of classroom educators. So we'll see you on the next one. And be well, everybody. Check out this video here. It's gonna be good for you as well. Thanks. Talk to you soon.